Greetings once again in that name that is above every name, and that is the name of Jesus. Good morning, Second Mount Zion, Facebook land, across the country and around the world. How blessed we are on this wonderful Lord's Day, uh, the Sunday which we call Palm Sunday. Amen. As Jesus enters into Jerusalem, amen, for his victory parade, amen. So we are delighted that you would join us this morning, and we praise God from whom all blessings flow. We thank God even for the liquid sunshine that he's sending down to landscape the earth and green up the grass and cause the flowers to begin to bloom. We are blessed in spite of our circumstances and situations. We were supposed to be in the parking lot today, but it is raining in Philadelphia, and we thank God even for his rain. Amen. And it's a good day to worship the Lord, and we welcome this morning Reverend Kevin Palmer, Minister Wilhelmina Haskins, uh, Dr. Teresa A. Powell. We welcome Pamela Saunders. We welcome Deacon Charles Parker, our Georgia connection. We welcome uh, Deacon Charles Parker and Sister Vicki Parker. We welcome Sister Dollar Jacks. Amen. Robinson Jacks, we're delighted to have you on board. Welcome, Sister Gwendolyn McDowell on board all the way from Rochester, New York. Amen. Welcome, Brother Charles Farley. Welcome, Deacon Vaughn Davis. Welcome, Sister Teresa Poole. Welcome, welcome, Sister Stacy Ryan Hooper. Welcome, amen, Sister Linda Adams. Good to see you this morning. Welcome, Sister Catherine Spain. We are delighted to see you on board this morning. Welcome, Sister Barbara Cherry. Amen. Amen and amen. Welcome, Sister Cherry. Oh, I, and while I hesitated on your names, we uh, the palms are at the church, and, and you can drive by and get your palms, and if some of the a uh, couple of maybe the ushers would meet me there also. We would be handing them out, uh, or we'll just, or, or maybe I'll just do it myself. Amen. Amen. So I can say hello to everybody and lay my eyeballs on you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Sister Sheila Adams. Good morning, Sister Josephine Wright. Good morning, Deacon Vaughn Davis. Good morning, Sister Doris Mickens. Delighted to have you on board. Good morning, Brother June Cole who was with us on yesterday in the parking lot, working hard. Delighted to have you on board this morning. Good morning, Sister Josephine Wright. Good morning, good morning, Sister Beverly Lind, all the way from, all the way from Deptford, New Jersey, our New Jersey connection. Good morning, Sister Mary Ward-Jones. Good morning, Sister... Uh, Bernetta Robinson Doyne. Good morning, Deacon Daniel Johnson was on the was with us on yesterday as we worked hard in the parking lot making preparations. But uh, the parking lot needed to be cleaned anyway. Hey, Amen. Good morning, Sister Rosa Bedford, another Georgia connection. Good morning, uh, Sister Dawn Beasley. Good morning, Trustee Debbie Glover Scalford. Good morning. Sister Valerie Mann, good morning. Sister Kimberly T. Han, good morning. Sister Barbara Saunders, amen. All the way from North Carolina, our North Carolina connections, good morning. Sister Sharon Bryant Jordan, good morning. Brother, brother, brother Ted Joseph Nevin, amen. Delighted to have you. Good morning, Sister Katora C. Green. All the way from Newcastle, Delaware. Good morning, Sister Dion Hyatt. Delighted to have you on board. Good morning, Sister Dolores Coots Anderson. Amen. Delighted to have you on board. Good morning, Brother Gerald and Sister Sister Young. Brother Gerald and Sister Gloria Young. Good morning, 
Sister Marjorie Borton, amen. Good morning, Deacon Harry Richardson. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sister Mary L. Smith is on board. Good morning, Brother Darrell Micken Sr., amen. All the way from California, amen. Delighted to have you on board. Good morning, Sister Anita, Anita J. Green. Good morning, Sister Karen White. Good morning. Brother Damian S. Jackson, counselor, good morning. Good morning, good morning, Sister Pamela Garwood. Good morning, Deacon Leroy Habler. Amen. We miss you on yesterday. Amen. The men had a wonderful time as they, as they fellowship, but uh, they said you had a legitimate excuse. Amen. Good morning. Kingdom's creation is on board. Who, who you know uh, made the gifts for us? Oh, oh, I almost gave it away. Good morning, <laughs> Sister Angela Davis. Good morning, Sister Mary L. Smith. Good morning, Sister Laura Kennelly. Good morning, Amen, Sister do, 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 Frankie Cutter Eason, all the way from Statesboro, Georgia. Uh -huh. Oh, praise the Lord. Good, glad to have you on board this morning. Good morning, Sister Gloria Young. Good morning, Sister Myris James, all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. Amen. Is it Baltimore or is it uh, Bowie, Maryland? Amen. Amen. Good morning, Sister Peggy Haley is on board. Good morning. Good morning, my other Baptist church is on board. Amen. Delighted to have you on before you do your service. Amen. Good morning, Deacon Wilbur Moore is on board. Uh, Brother Timothy Jiggets is on board all the way from Bowie, Maryland. Sister Deadrian Tenney is on board. Welcome back. Amen. Good morning, Sister Nell Chriswell is on board. Amen. We're delighted to have all of those persons on board with us this morning. And now the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hope. He is the King of glory, and the King is riding into Jerusalem on this day. Amen. Deacon Simpson is going to come to us now and give us our church school lesson, and we'll be back. Amen. After, amen. We'll be back. Yep. Yeah. Good morning, Zeki Mount Zion, and welcome to today's installation of the Sunday School Lesson. Our Sunday School Lesson today is taken from 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 5 through 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 5 through 18, and our key verse is verse 18, and the title is Bear of Bad News. Uh, but before I get into that, let me make some brief announcements. As Pastor alluded to, uh, we want to thank all the men who showed up yesterday to help clean up the lot, even though we're not going to have service uh, today, which we intended. Uh, we will have service next week. Easter service next week will be a drive-up, drive-in service in the parking lot, similar to the one we had before, and that will start at 10 a.m., so govern yourselves accordingly, and we, weather permitting, we hope to see you next week. And our contingency plan will be the same as we did this week, amen, if it rains next week. But hopefully the rain will hold off. Uh, Saturday, Saturdays, we have youth Bible study at 10 a.m. So we encourage parents and our youth to get to your screens and, and log on and enjoy a word from the Lord for our youth Bible study. Also, let me continue to remind you that all mails, correspondence, any mail that you send to Second Mount Zion, specifically if you're sending in your tithes, Please direct them to our post office box, which is P.O. Box uh, 41839, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19101. Uh, that way you will ensure that we can get your mail or your tithes in a timely manner. Amen. And as Pastor alluded to also, uh, palms will be available for pickup today at 12 noon, uh, and it's on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, so we will be at the church on the annex side, and you can pick up your palms after 12 noon, first come, first serve. Amen. All right. Again, our lesson is taken from the Old Testament, the Old Testament, 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 5 through 18. 
uh, two weeks ago when I was before you, I asked you a question. The question was, the name Joshua means Jehovah saves or Jehovah is salvation, which when translated into English, what name do we get? And the answer was, that answer that works in my Sunday school class every time, Jesus. Yes, sir. And the winner was Sister Darla Robinson Jacks. Thank oh, you for participating. I, I think you favored her. Uh, yeah. She answered first. She was quick. Oh, okay. Uh, and then last week, Pastor Moore asked you a question. What other chapter in the Old Testament carries the same story of Josiah? And that answer was Second Chronicles chapter 34, which mirrors what we the story we find in Kings. Amen. And that winner is Sister Angie Davis. Amen. I believe she probably heard this question before a time or two. Amen. Oh. All right. So let's let's get into the lesson. Uh, first, a little background. We are in uh, the book of Kings, First Kings, and let me just give you just some information backdrop on on Kings. First and Second Kings were originally one book uh, called Kings then subsequently divided into two when it was translated into the Greek. While the author remains unknown, scholars believe that this author is an unnamed prophet uh, who was living uh, in the land during Babylon, Babylonian captivity. Now, kings will trace the histories of two sets of, of kings and two nations of disobedient people, being Israel and Judah, both of whom were growing indifferent to God's law and his prophets. The books of First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings combined are a chronicle of the entire history of Israel and Judah's kingship from Saul to Zedekiah. First and Second Chronicles provides only the history of Judah's monarchy, hence how we get uh, uh, the correlation between the Second Chronicles 34 and the story that's told in Kings about uh, Josiah. The author, the author wishes to communicate lessons of Israel's history to the exiles to teach the community, one, why the Lord's judgment has come with the hope of them avoiding future judgment. The author established early in his writings that the Lord requires obedience, we'll see this in this lesson, by the kings to the Mosaic law and if their kingdom were to receive his blessings. But conversely, disobedience would bring punishment in the form of exile. So when I mention kings, kings uh, is divided and it gives you the history of the, of the two sets of kings and two nations of disobedient people, which leads me to my first question. Who was the last king of the United Kingdom? Who was the last king to reign before the kingdom split in two and was divided between Israel and Judah or northern and southern. Mm -hmm. Who was the last king of this divided kingdom? Please place your, uh, uh, your answer in the comment section as well. We encourage you to use the comment section to let us know what you think of the lesson. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What you don't like, comment. Let me know how the lesson is going, okay? All right, so the title of the lesson is Bearer of Bad News. And a prophet's role can be summed up in this, this statement very uh, simply. The role of the prophet is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Yes, sir. That's but it. it is inevitable while the prophet is carrying out his or her role that the prophet will have to deliver some bad news. Some bad news. Amen. And many times uh, that bad news, that, that person who is delivering that bad news doesn't, one, want to hear it. And delivering bad news can be a life-threatening arrangement, amen? Because many times the recipient, in this case is a king, doesn't want to hear what God is trying to tell them through the prophet. I, I remember when we talk about bearing bad news, advice I got early in my career uh, uh, from uh, uh, somebody that was more senior than I, and he said to me, he said, if you got some bad news, deliver it first thing or early in the morning. And the reason he said that is because a lot of times we got bad news and we got to tell and we carry it around with us ah. all day. And it just we can't get nothing done because we figure out how we going to fix this, what we going to do, how we going to tell somebody. But if you just tell them right off the bat early in the morning what's what's going on. And if it's bad news, if you can't do it, it's not going to happen. Get it over with. 
Good, good advice. And then you can get on with your day or figuring out a solution instead of being bogged down with worrying how am I going to deliver yes, sir. this bad news. So that was some advice I got, and I thought it was pretty pretty pertinent, and it made sense to me. Me too. And so this this prophet will have to deliver some bad news. And a, and a lot of times we have to deliver bad news. And sometimes we have to deliver bad news to some people who are ahead of us in our corporate structure uh -huh. or our bosses, amen, or governors or whomever. But we'll talk about that. But first I want to look at some of the characteristics uh, uh, the characters of these these people in this lesson. First, let's look at Ahab. Now, Ahab, Ahab is a, an interesting character. Interesting character. He was one of the most rebellious kings in the in Israel's history, as we learn from First Kings chapter sixteen, verse thirty and thirty three. It reads, "And Ahab, the son of Omari, did evil in the sight did of the evil. Lord." Above all that were before him. It seems like all those kings that came before him and did evil, and all the kings of Israel did evil, that each one topped each other in doing evil. Oh, it no. says, he did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Verse 33 says, and Ahab made a groove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. So he just was increasingly evil. Let me also say about Ahab is that, you know, uh, he was, God's law, you, you were commanded to stick to this, and Ahab pretty much just fractured them all. Amen? He was told never to worship false gods in Exodus. Um, he did that. He was told, we were told never to invoke the name of first God's part of the commandments in Exodus 23, 13. And we're also told not to marry or adhere to the practices of any of these foreign customs because they're going into this foreign land. They're in this foreign land. In essence, he's told not to, to be in the world, but not of the world. And he just fractures all of these and he does the opposite. He worships false gods, he invokes their name, and he also marries which uh, uh, Jezebel, which also causes him and the nation to sin. So he marries Jezebel, who was a Baal worshiper, who hated God's people and encouraged them to sin against God by worshiping other gods. And God sent prophets to warn him, but he refused to listen. His ultimate downfall came when he made an agreement with a foreign king he was supposed to kill and, and did nothing when his wife had an innocent Israelite murdered. Both uh -huh. Ahab and his wife Jezebel died a gruesome death. Let me say one thing, stick a pin in that they worship Baal. Baal was supposed to be the prophet uh, 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 of, of water and fertility. Stick a pin in that. Then let's look at Obadiah. Obadiah, the Obadiah found in this lesson, is not the minor prophet Obadiah. Obadiah worked in the king and worked in King Ahab's administration. Uh, he was a steward in charge of the king's affair. Although working for one of Israel's most disappointed kings, Obadiah maintained his belief in God. Scripture to identify him as a worshiper and one who feared God. Mm -hmm. And you can find that in 1 Kings verse 18 through 3. And we'll talk more about that. Then we look at the prophet Elijah. Little is known about, little is known about him other than he's from Tishbeth. God called him to prophesy and say, speak out against Baal worship in Israel and to actively take part in ending this abomination among God's people. So here you have some of the players. And also, before we get to verse 5, what we have to understand is that uh, before I think we start in 17, when Elijah comes on the scene, God calls him to confront Ahab and tell him that there is going to be a famine in the land. That's right. Sin because of their sin, leads to their chastisement in the form of a famine in the land. So he makes this pronouncement, and then uh -huh. God in his providence tells him to go, to get away and go down to the river Cherbeth and hide there. And, then, and now when we get to this lesson, three years has come, and God comes to him and says, you know what, I'm going to send some rain to the land, but you go and you find Ahab and you confront him. Mm -hmm. So when we see this lesson, what we first find is we find uh, Ahab and Obadiah searching for answers. Well, we see them, Ahab says to Obadiah, go into the land and unto the fountains of the water and all the brooks, pre-adventure that we may find grass to feed our cattle so they won't die. Now, 
let me say that he is not an animal lover. He's not, you know, because he cares for the animals. Uh -huh. He don't want the animals to die because he needs the animals to pull his uh, his chariots and to te and so he, to deliver his army. So he's worried about that. Yeah. So he's looking for a place, amen. He's looking for a place where they can feed so that they won't die off and and, and effectually make his army of non-effect. Mm -hmm. And so here they are, sir, they, and you know this is a dire situation because you have the king himself looking for somewhere to, to take care of the animals. Yes, amen? sir. And Obadiah, and they decide to divide the land in half. You go one way, I'll go the other. And here they are looking for answers. Looking for answers. Instead of looking to God. That's not going to come. Only if they would have did what David did. What David did. When, when, when he found out that he was disobedient, he turned to God, repented, ah. and got his answer in a famine. Listen, we're, we're, and the famine was over when he had a famine. When David had a famine, he listened to God and repented. But how many times is God the last person we listen to when we're in a jam, when we're in a situation, and we go searching for answers in all the wrong places? Yeah, yeah. And so he, he and Obadiah is obedient. He's a he's a he's a worshiper of God. He believes in God, but he's you know helping his king out, and they're searching. And as they're searching, there comes a divine encounter. Divine encounter. And he and it's not by happen chance as he was on his way alone. And sometimes God got to get you away from some people so that you can meet God's prophet, meet God's man. Amen. Some you got to get away from somebody and just get into a corner and get on a line, get online and hear. A word from the Lord, uh -huh. from God's man. Amen. And so when he sees him, he meets Elijah and he recognizes God's man. And he, and he falls and he, and, he, and he falls to him and he recognizes him. And first thing Elijah says is, you got to go to Ahab and tell him I'm here. Yeah. Now, here's the problem with this. I told you that Elijah had already pronounced that there was going to be a famine. And he already pronounced that the rain was going to stop. And God hit him for three years. But for three years, Ahab had been looking for him because he was like, you to cause this stuff, you're going to yeah. fix it. And so, but God in his providence hid him, not only hid him, but fed him by ravens and moved him from place to place. Uh -huh. So he provided provisions for him in his providence. And so now he comes to, now he, he finds Obadiah and says, go tell Elijah that, that I'm here and I want to meet him. Yes, sir. And now Obadiah, anxiety goes through the roof. He says, wait a minute. Now he has to deliver some bad news. To a king. To a king. And as Pastor Moore told you time and time and time again, when you come before the king with either bad news or bad continence, that could mean that your life is on the line. Yeah, that's right. And so he realizes that. That's but right, what Luke. he doesn't realize is that that same God who had been keeping Elijah, who had been moving him from place to place and hiding him and feeding him, was that same God who would help him. Yeah. would get him through this situation. Uh -huh. So he makes excuses. He says, man, why you want to kill me? He says, because Ahab been looking for you ever since for three years. And then he says, if I go tell him, I see how God's been working. He's been protecting you. He moves you from place to place. Yeah. And if I go tell Ahab that you're here, and then come time to meet him, you just disappear. I'm dead. <laughs> Guess what? Guess who's going to be mad? And I'm going to be dead. Uh -huh. yeah. But Elijah assured him that he has not come for that. And here you can see different, two different styles. Two different styles. All right. Obadiah see. is more of a, uh, uh, he, he, he's, he's, um, he's not as outspoken, right? Because mm -hmm. he still works in, he still works for this evil king. Yeah. Right? But he's not as outspoken as Elijah, who's ready to confront. He's not as confrontational. He's a little bit laid back. Uh -huh. Maybe say something like me sometimes. Yeah. Amen? You're in green. Not green. Forget <laughs> about that. But, uh, but they're two different styles. They're two different styles. But sometimes you, need to, sometimes you need a Malcolm X to a Martin Luther King. One who's going to stand up and say, by any means necessary, with the gun. And one who's going to say, we're going to do this by violence. One who's going to say, you're going to stand up and recognize us. Amen. Uh -huh. And one who's going to work it out by, you know, by prayer, by nonviolence. You, sometimes you need a yin to their yang. And so here I see in John chapter 17, verse 15, and, and Jesus in his prayer says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, uh -huh. but thou should keep them from evil. 
And he says, I pray that thou should not take Obadiah out of the king or thou should not take him off that job, but keep him there. Yes, sir. But keep him from evil because I need him in the king's house. I need a man. I need a representative. Cool. And sometimes it's cool for you. I need a re we need a representative where you work, when, where you live. In your block, you're not there. You're there for a reason. Yes, sir. And so, so you can look at Obadiah and say, "How can he work for this evil king?" But God says, "I need a man there that can influence, and at due time, he will influence." Amen. And so you see this yin and his yang to both of these. One is more confrontational. One is more laid back. Elijah says, "Don't you remember that I was the one who hid a uh, hundred prophets when when Jezebel tried to kill him? I hid him and fed him." But why are you trying to send me to this certain death? Amen. And so two different styles. But what Obadiah doesn't realize is that the same God who protected and who kept Elijah will protect him even when he has to deliver bad news. And we'll talk about when you have to deliver bad news, what you need to do, how to get, because you just can't go in there and deliver bad news and just on a wing think that everything's going to be all right when you deliver this type of bad news. All right. When will you talk about it next week? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it. <laughs> so he tells him, go tell him, behold, I'm not going nowhere. And so here we find the confrontation. And what I think about this confrontation is that he is confronting this evil king. But he's not confronting him to humiliate him, to kill him. He's confronting him. Uh, with power, with the purpose of giving him an opportunity to reconcile, mm -hmm. even though he's evil. Let me drop. Let me drop this thought. Many times, jail. I, I I think the original purpose, or what the purpose of jail is for, is to be reformative. Like we're supposed to send people to jail to reform them and then introduce them back into society if their sentence does not warrant that they can't come back to society. You know, if you're a lifer, you're a lifer. You know, if you did some heinous crime, like go shoot 10 people, then maybe you should keep stay your life in jail. However, when, when you're a young kid and you make a mistake and we send you to jail, is it to reform them? Let me, let me pose the question another way, and I'll be interested to hear your comments. Do we send jail as a punishment Send people to jail as punishment or for punishment? Mm. Uh -huh. Do we send people to jail as punishment? Because if it's as punishment, then hopefully we rehabilitate them, help them to introduce them back into society. Yes, sir. Or, we just, or do we send them for punishment, punitively? And if we do that, we may be in trouble because I hear God say that vengeance is mine, mm. says the Lord. Amen. And so this confrontation comes and he confronts him with giving him the opportunity to do right, to get right. But he doesn't take the opportunity and he tries to turn the tables on him and says, you're the trouble. He calls him a trouble, troubler, the trouble of Israel. You trouble Israel. But he answers back and says, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. You have forsaken God, turned from God, and worshiped other idols. Amen. And now this thing has befalled you. And maybe something has befalled you because you have turned from God, uh -huh. and you started putting things before God. Your boo, your job, your money, whatever it is. And so the answer, as David did, was he returned, he repented, and he meant it. And that's why, that's why in spite of David being an adulterer, murderer, uh, uh, and, and fraction all the laws, God can say that's a man after my own heart because he sincerely repented. Amen. All right. all right. And so in this lesson, we see that the opportunity to repent is there, but sometimes we go looking for answers in all the wrong places. Next week, that ends our lesson for this week. That's my overview. Next week's lesson overview. is from Isaiah, Isaiah 53, uh, verses 4 through 11. Key verse oh, is Lord. 5, amen? And we will start a new unit, and so I will inform you about that coming up next week. Amen. Thank you All for right. your time and your participation. We will have a selection from our praise and worship team at this time. Thank you.
Greetings once again in that name that is above every name, and that is the name of Jesus. Thank you, Deacon Simpson, for our church school lesson. Thank you, uh, Praise and Worship, for sharing with us. And now we will delve into the Word of God. Uh, we, we are going to be looking tonight or today uh, from the 19th chapter of our Lord's Gospel as recorded by St. Luke. We're going to look at Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Uh, let me just, I, I won't take the time, we'll be looking at verses 28 through 40, 
and I won't take time to read all of the verses because I have a standby verse over in uh, Luke chapter 13, verses 32 through 34, and I want to get to those standby verses, but let me just read from verse 37 and uh, then go over to chapter 13 of the Gospel of Luke. Luke 19, 37. Listen. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of Mount Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with loud voices for all of the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, Teacher. rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Immediately. immediately cry out. And then we want to back up to the 13th chapter and look at verses 32. And he said to them, go tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. Verse 34, O Jerusalem, o Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the one that kills the prophets, and stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathereth her broods under her wings. Yes, a hen. Uh, but you were not willing. But you were not willing. I, I want to talk about Keeping the spotlight on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping the spotlight on Jesus. Luke, as he wrote in the book of Acts uh -huh. to his friend Theophilus, yeah. said that I am giving you an, uh, an, an account of, of all that Jesus both began to do and to teach. Yeah. And that former account that he was talking about was the gospel of Luke. Yeah. Jesus was, was on uh, a divine schedule. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was on a divine schedule. And uh, Herod has really been trying to kill Jesus ever since his birth. That's right. Did you hear me? I said Herod has been trying to kill Jesus ever since birth. Because you remember when he was born, Herod told the wise men, when you find him, tell me where he is that I might come and worship. But he really wanted to kill him. And the reason I know they wanted to kill him, because he killed all boy babies that was two years and under, so he would not miss Jesus. But, but since he was on a divine uh, schedule, God warned his parents in a dream to go down into Egypt. And when that Herod died, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. When that Herod, listen to me now. When see Herod, Herod, Herod here is a title, just like president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, one president goes out, but another president comes in, and we call him president. And we, and we call President Biden president now. But last year this time, it was another president, but he's out now, and Biden is in. And when, when the Herod earlier tried to kill Jesus as a boy baby, when he died, Jesus comes back to where Herod thought that he was in charge. And I got a word for somebody here today. That if you think you're in charge, you just mess around and die, and you see that things keep going on. Lord have mercy. Mess around and die. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so, and and so, here is Herod. Herod and 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 the Pharisees. They has warned Jesus. Some of his enemies has warned Jesus that. That Herod is setting all kinds of traps, and Herod wants to kill you. Oh, that every day some, some Pharisees came saying to, to him, get out and depart from here, in verse 31, for Herod wants to kill you. Kill you. But listen to Jesus. Jesus said, don't nobody set my agenda. Mm. He says in verse 32, go and tell that fox. In other words, uh, 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 when somebody calls you a fox, they're saying you're sly. Yeah. You're slick and you sly as a fox. Yeah. But uh, hey, Jesus said, go tell that fox that I am aware of all of his strategies and all of his scheme. He said, listen, tell him that I'm, I'm going to cast out demons and I'm going to perform cures Today, tomorrow, and the third day, I'll be perfected. You tell that fox that I'm going right on, on my divine agenda, and he can't do nothing about it. That's right, nothing. Nevertheless, I must journey tomorrow, today, and following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish out of Jerusalem. In other words, I know what's going to happen in Jerusalem. That's why in Luke 9, 51, he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. He said the work that I need to do is at Jerusalem, but there's a process that has to take me to Jerusalem. Yeah. Because I got some more teachings and I've got some more miracles to work and I've got to continue to teach my disciples and so I'm following a divine process. And let me say something about process. A lot of time we looking at the goal. Jesus says, I already know what the goal is going to be. So all I've got to do is just work the process. Ah. And a lot of time, a lot of time we are looking at the goal rather than the process. But if you learn how to fall in love with the process, the you will reach your goal. Yeah. yeah. The story is, the story is that there was a young man who wanted to become, he wanted to become an expert archer. Yeah. And uh and uh he had been training for about four or five years, and now the big tournament was coming up, and uh and his, and, and his mentor said, how do you feel? He said, I feel good. He said, my goal is to win the, the tournament. Win. And when the tournament came, when he that? did terrible. Oh. And uh, his mentor came to him after with his head hanging. His head was hanging down. His mentor said to him, I knew you were going to lose when you forgot the process and start focusing on the goal. Oh, that's good. Bro. And a lot of times, and a lot of times, we forget the process and start focusing on the goal, and we fail miserably. You know, in sports, they tell you they they tell you uh, uh, trust the process. I think the Sixers came out with that uh, uh, yeah. a few years ago. Trust, trust the process, trust the, and the process was practice. Practice, practice, discipline, 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 and stop focusing on the goal. But if you prepare yourself, the goal will take care of itself. Yeah. And so Jesus says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and, and he wept over Jerusalem. He said, oh, wept. Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent to her. How often I wanted to 
to protect you. How often I wanted to gather you under my wings, but you wouldn't let me. He says, I will, and, and those of you from the country, you know what a hen does with her bitties, well, and she makes that noise and cluck, cluck, and, all, and, and spreads her wings, and all of the little bitties, I don't care if it's 10 or 12, Simpson Green, yeah. they come under her wings, and she covers them. Uh, when, well, danger, when danger is coming, she gives out a signal, lifts her wings, uh, and every one of those those little baby chicks comes under her wing and she spreads them and covers them and keep them from danger. And what Jesus was saying to Jerusalem is how often I wanted to gather you under my wing and protect you, but you wouldn't let me. You were not, you were not willing. And so this journey, this journey, this journey, this journey, this journey, look at, look at, look at verse 28. When he, when he said, when he had said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. See, see, Jerusalem always was situated high. You got to go right. up to Jerusalem because that was God's capital city in the That's Old right. Testament. And it came to pass that he, uh, yeah, 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 he neared to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives that he sent two of his disciples. Now, uh, uh, I, I, I told you, Jesus Jesus was on a journey, but Luke keeps the spotlight on Jesus. The spotlight. Yeah, 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 yeah. He keeps the spotlight on Jesus, and he, and he highlights. It looks like he talks about a place, but he highlights Jesus. Yeah. And, and because Jesus has completed... The journey from the Galilean area where Herod was, he had completed his journey in spite of the fact that Herod wants to hinder him, Herod wants to kill him. He has completed his journey. Now he's ready to enter Jerusalem. And so uh, he's, Luke is not highlighting the place, but he only mentioned the place to let you know that Jesus has completed his journey yeah, yeah. because he's on, he's on a divine agenda. And uh, he sent two of his disciples. And uh, two of his disciples, unnamed disciples. Oh, say that, bro. Unnamed. Unnamed disciples, and uh, I thought about calling this calling this text hidden figures. Ah, next time, because yeah, next time. Yeah, that'll preach, bro. That 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 there were some hidden figures in this text. Ah. They were unnamed disciples, uh, and uh, and and not one of the gospel accounts called their name. Not one. They were unnamed disciples. And if, if we would serve the Lord, we must be willing to serve without attention, uh -huh. drawn to ourselves. Did you hear me? That's yeah, good, Reverend. Because who is the one that's being spotlighted? Jesus. Jesus is the one that's being spotlighted. And so we must be willing to serve without attention. After all, it is the Lord who is to be noticed and who's to be honored. Yeah. And that's what that's what that's what Palm Sunday is all about. Hey, Jesus being noticed and honored. Yes, and, and, and two of his disciples. Two. Two of his disciples, two unnamed disciples and and uh, when, 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 when Luke looks and notice, what he, uh, he observed his observation is not the place but a person. Uh, yes. That, that's his observation. And, 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 and there are, there are several ways in which you can gain knowledge. You can gain knowledge by observation, inspiration, and formal education. Yeah. Mm. But I, I, I'm leaning more toward 
observation and inspiration. inspiration. Because our foreparents did not have the formal education that we have. Well, but they gained so much more than we have, and they were closer to the Lord than we are. With all of our formal education, they had observation and inspiration. Yes, and they walk with the Lord. And so Luke uses, since he didn't walk with Jesus and the disciples, he observed everything that he knew about Jesus, and he observed every step. And every he observed the movement of Jesus. He, he, he tells his friend Theophilus in the first chapter of the book of Acts that, that I am giving you an, an account of all that Jesus began to do and to teach. He observed everything, everything. about Jesus, what he did and who he taught. He, he, he observed he observed Jesus the observation is that he had yeah. he had two disciples and his two disciples he says go into the village opposite you where where as you enter you will find a coat tied on which no one has ever sat loose him and bring him to me yeah. coat ah you see Loose him and bring him to me. Loose him. So, those who were sent didn't call their name. Ah, listen to that. Went their way and found it just as he had said to them. You see, see, obedience must be complete or it cannot pass for obedience. And you, you know how it is sometimes we will do part of what the Lord says yeah. and we will do some of what the Lord says, but we won't do it all. You know, I won't really tithe, but I will give something. something. Ah. something. Obedience must be complete. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it must be complete or, or it does not. Yeah. It does not count for obedience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And see, when you are obedience, Help me, Robert. you will you 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 will realize the promise if you obey. Uh, yeah. See, you you will some of us will never realize the promise because we are not obedience. You know, like, you know, bring all the tithes into the storehouse? Yeah. And see, when we, there's a promise there. Yeah, that's in the Bible. See, won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? You you, you will never get that overrunning blessings because you you won't complete your obedience. Yeah, not doing your part. Ah. Uh -huh. See, see, and, and, and verse 33 would be very encouraging for the disciples. It, it would be encouraging to them in their obedience and in their recognition of Jesus Christ in control of every event of our lives. It was encouraging to them, it was encouraging to them to, to go and find things just like Jesus said it was because each victory will help you some other to win. That's right. Every time we are obedient and God blesses us, it encourages us to be more, more, more obedient. And because they were obedient, they was encouraged in the process because, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like Jesus said it was going to be. Yeah. And uh, he says, and if anybody... Here is a, an, another another hidden figure. A hidden figure sir. If anybody asked you, yeah, what you're doing, what you doing, just tell them that the Lord has need of him. And the reason it was so encouraging is because is because they they had a healthy 
uh, exchange without hostility. Yeah. That's what that's what obedience brings to you. Uh, and you, you see, after 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 observation and after obedience, there is the outcome. The outcome. The outcome was a healthy exchange without hostility. And you, you see, when when and, and and when 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 it could have been a potential of an hostility. Yeah, that's right. When when the Lord is at work, yeah. stuff seems to fall in place. That there was there was no hostility. And so this this other hidden figure uh must have been a disciple too. And, right. and, and and you know you, you know why I say he must have been a disciple? Why is that right? Because when they said that the Lord has need of him, there was no question because only a disciple recognized that everything that's in my possession belongs to the Lord. That's it. Wow. That's good, right? Even though he is the owner, there is the Lord. The Lord. He, even though he might be a little L, Lord, but Jesus tell him that the big Lord has need of him. He recognized the authority of Jesus. Yes, sir. Lord and Lord. and and there was no con there was no 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 hostility yeah. and no confrontation. Yeah. And then they brought the coat uh to Jesus and and threw their 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 garments on him and their clothes on the coat and they sat. Jesus on the coat. Yeah, the coat, the coat. Right? Here is a coat. real, here is a real word. Uh, King James probably says ass. Oh, dirt. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they sat Jesus on the donkey. Donkey. Here is a real word for the Christian community. Help me. What's that, brother? The coat's only job was to lift up Jesus. Ah. Wow. Good God about it. Ah. All he did was lift up Jesus so the people could see. That's it. He had never been ridden before. No. And when you ride an unbroken coat or horse, no. normally he bucks and kicks until you break his spirit. Even the coat, even the donkey, even the animal recognize the lordship of Jesus. Wow. Yes, sir. Oh, you can stop there, brother. No, no, don't stop. He, Keep going. Yeah, yeah, he recognized the lordship of Jesus because his, his only job was to lift up Jesus. Only. Only job. That's a word for us today. Yeah. Our only job is to lift up Jesus. That's why Luke, that, that's why I like Luke because Luke. Luke gives you a more detailed account of the event of Palm Sunday and uh, he kind of puts it where Gentiles can understand yeah. because he's not a Jewish writer. He's not writing to the Jews. He's not, he's not a Roman writer. He's not writing to the Roman, but he's writing to Gentiles who don't know all of the history of Israel. Yeah. And so this coat, he teaches us, even this, this animal teaches us that our only job is to lift up Jesus. And can't you hear him saying that if I be lifted up yeah, what from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me and millions and thousands of folk were following Jesus into Jerusalem. And so the outcome was not only, not only a healthy exchange without hostility, but the final outcome was worship. Good God Almighty. Yeah, that's good. Right? And it's right here in the text, right? It's right there in verse 37. If you didn't tear it out of your Bible, yes, it's in it. there. And when he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples oh. began to rejoice and praise God. Good God Almighty. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, with, with loud voices. They wasn't whimpering. You know, there's a lot of folk, there's a lot of folk who go around talking about, well, you know, I don't worship like everybody else. And I, you know, I worship quiet. 
And I don't have a problem with that as long as you are quiet in the movies, as long as you are quiet at the ball game, then that you just quiet. But you can't be quiet in church and then loud at the ball game. That, 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 that doesn't coincide with each other. And so they cried with loud voices for all of the mighty works that they had seen. Good God Almighty. Saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the law in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory glory to God in the highest and they were just they were just praising God and thanking God because the deliverer has come and let me just say it let me just give you another little quick lesson about this coat yeah this coat had to be redeemed and that's an old testament principle yeah. when whenever you redeem redeem a coat you he had to be redeemed by a lamb Oh, and, and the Lamb of God uh -huh. said, "Go and redeem him." And once, 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 once he's redeemed, uh, he's got to be loosed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's got to be loosed. And see, sometimes we we we've been redeemed, but we're not loose. Uh -huh. You remember Adam? I mean, you remember Lazarus? Yeah. When Jesus when Jesus called Lazarus from the grave? Yeah. Come forth. He came forth and he was he was alive. Yeah. But he was still bound. Uh, you said something. And Jesus said, loose him. Yeah, loosen him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and take off the grave clothes on him. And, uh, and, and somebody here today, somebody here today, uh, you still wearing your grave clothes. Oh, him right. and, and and it's a good time on this Palm Sunday to be loose. Loose. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, you can't be led until you're loose. Yes, sir. Almost, Lord, almost. And, uh, and, and there's a whole lot of folk. A whole lot of folk. Yeah, you, you may be alive, but you're still bound. Ah. And, 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 and he had to be loose. And once he's loose, now he can be led. Yeah. And you know the reason that a lot of folk can't be led? Why, Reverend? Because they're still bound. Ah. Wow. They're still bound in their mind. They're still bound to a past. They're still bound to a relationship that went sour. Yeah. And uh, now, because that relationship went sour, you don't trust nobody. Nobody. And you promised yourself and promised the Lord that I ain't going to never trust nobody again. No. You are still bound. This quote also teaches us that, that, that you got to be, be loose. And then when you can be led, he, he, the coat also teaches us that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because uh, lordship suggests rule, that he rules in my life. Uh -huh. And the coat has more sense than some individuals. Wow. He recognized Jesus as Lord, and uh, the Lord has ruled over him, and all he's doing is just traveling through the streets of Jerusalem, lifting Jesus up. Lifting. And wherever your Jerusalem is today, mm. you ought to you ought to lift him up. Uh -huh. So the world can see. The world is hungry. Yeah, sweet it, Reverend. For the living bread. Yeah. yeah. And if I be lifted up sweet it now, Reverend. from the earth, yeah. I'll draw all men unto me. And they lifted him up and they were praising God, saying glory to God in the highest. And uh, say, and it's translated uh, yeah, 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 Hosanna, 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 the Lord saves. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the Lord saves for he saved me one day. Yeah. When I was sinking deep in sin, uh -huh. very deeply stained within, sinking the rise no more. But I heard the voice of Jesus saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh -huh. and, 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 and before I clued, conclude this text, uh, the, the text says, when they praised God, the Pharisees in the crowd, the religious folk in the crowd, said, Jesus, rebuke your disciples and make them shut up. But, I, but, but I'm so glad yeah, that right, when right. you worship, Jesus got your back. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus always had his back with folk who worship him. You remember in the 12th chapter of John, when Mary began to worship him, she worshiped him and poured all of the precious oil 
on his feet. Mary didn't have to respond to Judas, but Jesus said, leave her alone because she recognized something that you didn't recognize. And I know it's Women's History Month, but, but it was the woman who recognized something about Jesus. She recognized it before his disciples. Yes, Lord, his disciples are somewhere scared and wondering how to get out of their situation. And she worshiped the law. You see, you discover something in worship because yeah. worship is therapeutic. Yeah. Yes, Lord, yeah. worship is good for the mind. Yeah. And worship helped you to recognize really who Jesus is. And she poured all of the expensive oil on his feet. And, and Judas objected. And he said, leave her alone. And the Pharisees, they objected with the worship of the disciples. And I heard Jesus saying, yes, Lord, if they keep silent and if they hold their peace, the very rocks would cry out saying glory to God. And I don't want no dumb, inanimate object to cry out for me, but I want to cry out for myself. I want to say hallelujah, glory and honor to our God. I don't know about you, but what but I already know what the end is going to be. Yes, Lord, because I got the word of the Lord, and it's been revealed in me, to me, through the word of the Lord. I know what the end is going to be. He's going on to Jerusalem, and he said, Lo, man, take my life, but I lay it down. In other words, in Jerusalem, he said, You are one that killeth the prophets, and so I know what's going to happen to me. And he went on to Jerusalem and put his hand, life in the hands of evil folk. And they crucified him, hung him high, stretched him wide. Hey, hey. Yeah. And he didn't die yeah. because they could kill him. But he bowed his head yeah. in the lops of his shoulder yeah. and then gave up the ghost so he could die. He stayed in the grave. Oh, I heard him say after three days he says to Herod after three days I will be perfected and he got up with all power in his hand hey hey tabernacle on the earth for 50 more long days but then after a while and by and by he released the diamond atoms from his body cut the wings of the cloud and the spotlight was still on Jesus and I heard his disciples say, who going to make us well when we get hungry, yeah. when we get sick? But I heard Jesus say, I'm not going to leave you by yourself, but I'm going to send you somebody. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. I'm going to send him in my name. Hey! Hey! Oh, that's good preaching. That's right? what it is, Green. You know good preaching, boy. I started to go find the oil. Keep up. Keep. The spotlight on Jesus. Yeah, keep it. And if you keep the spotlight on Jesus, guess what? What's, What's that, that? Right? He will prepare you for every situation. And then, on the flip side of that, he'll prepare every situation for you. Yeah. It's right here in the text. Yeah, I ain't tear it out. Right? He prepared the disciples to meet up with the owner of the donkey and he prepares the owner of the donkey to meet the disciples. Don't you think that this pandemic has caught Jesus off guard? Huh? And if you woke up this morning and you're still here, yeah. he has prepared you for the pandemic, yeah. and he has prepared the pandemic for you. Huh? When you are in harmony with God, God can prepare you for every situation, and then he can prepare every situation for you. Yeah. But you got to keep the spotlight on him. You can't let other voices get into your head and change your agenda. Change. Don't change the process. If you stick to the process, the outcome will take care of itself. God bless you.
heaven smile upon you. And uh, you got to go to John's gospel and read God, John's gospel to get the palms. Yeah. John says, the other, the synoptic gospels says there was branches, but John says there were palm yeah. branches. And the palm branches is a symbol. It's a symbol, and symbols point beyond themselves. See, a symbol, the, palm, the symbol of the palm point to Jesus' victory. That's right. Yeah, victory. His victory over the journey. That's how come Luke mentioned the place. Luke. Because he was in Galilee in Herod's territory, but he ends up in Jerusalem completing his journey. Yes, sir. And so that's the reason that we can want, we can, we can wave the palms today because of Jesus' victorious journey. And so let's ask God's blessings upon the palms so that when you stop by and pick them up, uh, they will already be blessed. God, God, we thank you now. For your journey. We thank you for us keeping the spotlight on you. That it's not about us. But it's about you and about what you have done. And so we ask your blessings upon these yes. palm branches and leaves. And we ask that you would allow those who receive them. To receive them with the spirit of victory. Uh -huh. That you are victorious, and because of your victory, we can also be victorious. Because greater is he who is in us right. than he that is in the world. And you can prepare us for every situation that will come our way, and then you will prepare the situation for us. In the masterful and in the marvelous name of Jesus, amen and amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.